Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Charles here and finally we have some onboard footage. Uh, the reason why there's no road crit footage is because it's currently not allowed in the road crits, but in fixed gear crits it is. So here I am, double cam. So we got the rear on the top, the GoPro on the front uh, and to get some really nice angles. And to preface this race, I want to say this is nearly the second race in a row. I've just finished the senior 1-2 crit in road, placed myself in 20th place out of 50, something like that. So not a good performance, but uh, I mean, here's a second chance. It's a fixed gear crit. And the first minutes were easy. Uh, most of the field just literally just raced the senior one. Uh, some were masters who race in the morning. So at this point, we were just uh, chilling, and the course was great. Uh, this was in Bromont, and there was a uh, really love here, this right-left chicane. There was a lo longer climb, a long descent, which was super hard on the fixed gear. We're going to see later the cadence go super high. But yeah, the start of the race was chill. Nothing really happened um, for the first 15 minutes. The course was great, as you see a lot of spectators on the right. And on the left here, that's the as we cross the finish line, and cool race. Uh, I gotta say, fixed gear racing is definitely interesting. Uh, no brakes, one gear, so you really have to choose the gear you wanna you're gonna use for that ride, and especially for the course. But here we got finally got some action. Uh, start to move up here and got some speed from the descent and say, hey, all right, it's now time I can move. Go to the left and look who's just cutting me. Freaking Nick Cote. You guys know Nick Cote caused a lot of crashes. But here what's happened. A good move from my teammate and a right away counter attack. And that's where the smaller Nick Cote just go. A guy from odds keep going and we have another teammate. And that first action literally put tall Nick, this guy in white and black shorts, in trouble. Because at this point, he's alone. He needs to chase this. There's about a five second gap already and he's working it. And the thing in, with this fixie races is there are literally two teams here in Quebec, iBike and Odds. And at this point, we're like seven iBike members, two in a break. So we're lucky we just get to sit here while Nick Cote is trying to close this. And yeah, so Nick is an independent. Uh, there's three other independent race racers in the race, but they were just chilling in the back. It was maybe not a good strategy for them to just be there. But let's see how this plays out. So at this point, Nick is just trying to close. Out front, they're pushing hard. And the team here, we're just waiting. We're just making a big gap between the first guy closing in and all the independent riders out in the back. And we just wait. Just ride until something happened. <laughs> and I soon, pretty much, as soon as he was going to close this, it was either going to be me, Frank, Josh, who would right away launch another counterattack. So that's the, that's the power of the men, uh, that's the power of the numbers, actually. And at this point, Nick started to slow down. And he realized that he cannot close this alone. And Josh here asked me if I want to go, but I was too cook. And that's where Frango, our teammate, he started, he started and saw he was alone. I think he wanted me to come with him. And he should have kept going because at that point, the gap was closable by himself. But here he just soft pedal. Uh, no one took his wheel, so I think the move he should have done is just kept going, try to catch the other guys. So it will be a three on one into the break. But he doesn't. Here we got uh, Chris Gill from Huds, just pedaling, chilling in front. We got Heron, and nothing's happening because Nick is cook. In the back here, if you look at the rear view, we have uh, there's a guy from Rocket Factory, and he hasn't been helping Nick at all, closing this gap. Literally, nothing was going to happen until other people was going to try to help Nick as you see him again out front, putting his head down, but unfortunately, he's alone, and that doesn't work out for him. The gap probably grew to about 30 seconds at this point. We barely see them in that bottom camera, and there we go. Uh, someone from Rocket Factory just launched it, as you just saw, and the thing is, he went alone. And I'm not too sure why you've done that. First of all, he started way too strong. He's already have created a big gap, but push, what, a, a thousand watt to get there. And it was just a matter of time be before we would catch him back. 
and here we see uh, on the left from uh, black and yellow green uh, finally showing himself uh, from his Velo Saint Joseph out in the front but I mean he, sh he should have been communicating with the guy from Rocket Factory because now he's, he's just like surfing second wheel so at that point we catch both guys back from Rocket Factory Velo Saint Joseph they're now recovering in the back and Nick Cote is now still hammering in the front and now he's chilling that's where we start a little counter attack but we have here Rocket Factory going up on the left here trying to pull but he's by himself and he hasn't been I don't even know if they talked to Nick Cote so here again Nick Cote goes and I just say up 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 we got Ollie right on his tail and they, they can't do anything against our numbers and the thing what they should have done is just talk to each other I'm sure if Nick the Rocket Factory guy and the Velo Saint Joseph one would just uh, communicate, try to make turn poles in the front. Um, maybe there would have been a chance to close that gap, but they were just doing flying attacks, recovering, which was just doing a bigger gap, and then another flying attacks, and all that uh, was pretty much uh, useless. And here I was super scared because, as you saw, the guy created a gap. Uh, good thing my buddy Frank closed it. And now he's dropped. Uh, I'm not too sure why I'm this far back. I mean, I'm I'm feeling great, but again, it's the second race in a row. I've worked really hard on that first race, and uh, I'm trying to save as much energy, energy as possible for uh, for a sprint for the fourth place. Uh, so that's why I'm mostly hanging there. But as you saw, it can be a dangerous game when you're behind someone who might drop. <laughs> you see all the cadence is so high, and at that point, sometimes it's really hard because we have to. Uh, slow down using your force here since you don't have brakes so I had to here to l lose a bit of energy slowing down and then push it back up again up this little climb there that was a bit annoying because we're on fixed gear bikes at this point I mean the race is basically over the gap grew to a minute 30 uh, there's no way the guys were gonna close down and there's no way our team were gonna chase this uh, so it was just now a rest game until the sprint Right now, bell lap, as you can hear, and I'm going to play this lap the whole time because there's some mistake that I've done and I want to share with you guys so I don't make those mistakes again and you guys don't make them either. And I know coming to this last lap, I pretty much have the biggest sprint of the whole peloton, of the whole field, um, but positioning is so important and it's something that I should have done better. So here, right where I am, I'm sitting on my uh, best buddy wheel, so Ollie, Led's Racing, and I say, all right, Ollie is a trustable guy. I know he's going to bring me up to the front, but we may may have been sitting a bit too much behind here. Um, now the pace is slowly ramping up. Uh, there's a couple of guys at the front uh, from our team bringing the pace up. Here, just asking Ollie if he has some juice to keep going. He, I don't think he heard me, uh, but yeah. So decide to stick on his wheel, but that's not the wheel that I should have been. I should have been a bit more forward right behind tall Nick Cote or Josh so you see Josh green helmet right behind Nick white and that was the wheel to go I knew Nick has the second best sprint here uh, so I sh should have been there but stick to the plan stay behind Holly and now the pace just start to go up even one more notch and that's where first attack fly in super soon boom here's Nick and I saw it Holly didn't I said just up 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 couple seconds too late and now we start to close up and the problem is here Aaron created a gap uh, so Ollie had this gap to close and he's running out of energy so look at this big gap I have to close it's a couple meters I sprint I give him my all uh, I catch up but ran out of time uh, if the line was what 100 meters longer could have get it but unfortunately I was placed too much in the rear and now for the break, here the final sprint. So we have Bergeon Odds was leading out, but Nick trying to come across and couldn't. Uh, finish line, uh, photo finish. And he, Nick Cote got beaten by, what, like a couple of centimeters. So first place goes to Odds, second to Nick, and third to Laurent. Uh, so big shout out to iBike. We got second and third place. Happy for the squad. 
All right, guys, so this is it for today's though. And there will be more onboard camera footage uh, next Wednesday. There is another fixed gear race, so I will be filming again. Hopefully some uh, recap will go here on YouTube in the week after. Uh, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed this deal, don't forget, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already. And my name is Charles, and I will see you guys on the road or into the next video. Peace.